This video tutorial is going to be about creating a simple way to render our character poses. Uh, nice and easy streamline settings so that we don't have to get too technical with our cameras and our, and our uh, render settings. So, there's a first, uh, first of all, there's a few things that I like to do when I render out poses before I even touch any of the settings. So what I'll do is I like to create cameras, so I'll go to create cameras, camera, and I'll name this like render cam or something. And then I'll go to my panels right here, perspective, click on render cam, click away here and hit F, and then I'll go to view, camera settings, resolution gate. And then I like to make sure that I kind of set up my view best as possible to take up a good amount of space following uh, just general design, making sure that I've got good negative space. I'll turn off my NURBS curves and I'll hit 7 on my keyboard to see the silhouette. And I think in general this is kind of a good a good view. We don't have too much space above the head, too much space above the feet. There's a little bit of space on either side so we'll probably change the render settings in a little bit here. So what also you can do, if you like your camera view and you don't want to accidentally mess with it, we can go to Window outliner and we can select our camera that we just created render cam and I can go over to these settings here I can highlight them like this by just left clicking and dragging down then right click lock selected now if you're ever in this view you won't accidentally change it if you need to change your camera or you need to change your pose you can go to a different view by hitting spacebar panels perspective perspective and now we can zoom around the sky all we want and change any uh, of the pose, any parts of the pose that are necessary. So I'll go back to this camera setting. I also like to turn off this grid here, because even though that won't render, it's a little distracting to me. So I'll, I'll either, you can either click this button here, or show and uncheck grid. Finally, before we get into the render settings, we like to, uh, it's good to create a ground. That way if the character is casting a shadow, uh, it, it'll actually show up as opposed to if they're just floating in space here you'll never see a shadow. So I'll go to create polygon primitives plane and I'll name this ground and then under the inputs polyplane I'll go to height and width and I'll just type in like 1000 or something. If you want you can also just scale it manually with the scale tool or R on your keyboard. It's a little quicker for me to just go in here and type in different numbers. I also want to add this to a layer so I don't accidentally select it if I'm trying to move my character around. So I can go to my layers down here and you can either click this button right there at the very end or you can go to layers, create layer from selected and it'll automatically throw that object onto this layer. And you can make it visible or invisible. We can name that layer so I'll just call it ground underscore layer and then we'll switch this to referenced mode by clicking this button until it says R. Now we can't accidentally select that. Next, what we'll want to do is apply a uh, material to this ground. So I'll click the rendering here, the render tab under the shelf tabs here, and I'll, I'll need to select this again and since I made it unselectable you can either remake it selectable or we can go into our window outliner and select our ground, minimize that, and then by default you should see all these materials under the render tab. This one to the far right is the one we're going to use. It's called Use Background. In case you don't see this, we can go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Now if you have that object selected and you click Use Background, it'll automatically apply it, but just in case you don't, what we can do is we can open up our hypershade here and we can navigate on the this huge list of materials that we got and it should be 10 or 15 down use background I can just click it right there now once again we can there's a few ways we can do this we can middle mouse drag this on top of that material or on top of the ground just by middle mouse drag like that or we can select the object again and right click assigned to material. And what you should see, if you click away, is it almost looks like invis it's invisible. And the reason is, is because it is doing what the material sounds like. It's applying 
a material to this object that is using the color of the background that we see here. So I'll go back to my hypershade and I'll double click this use background. I'll minimize this. I'll name it like ground M for material. And then we'll need to change a few settings. So first of all, I'm going to take the specular color option here and I'm going to go all the way down to black. Now what specular color does is essentially it'll, if it's up and we render it, we'll see like a shiny surface because it's reflecting, for lack of a better term, the area around it. Now reflectivity is actual literal reflectivity like a mirror. I'll also turn that down. Um, and by having those two down, this ground just becomes something for the character to stand on and to project a shadow onto. So next I'm going to click Control A until I can get to back to my channel box, channel box. Make sure my ground layer is set back to reference so I don't accidentally select it. Finally, we're ready to jump into our render settings. So if your view looks like this by default, you can click this button right here, which is the render settings, the little clapper with two dots, or we can go to Window, Rendering Editors, Render Settings. Now by default, Maya is set to render using Maya software, but we're going to want to use Mental Ray. Mental Ray will give us just cleaner, nicer results in general. And we'll scroll down and we're going to want a better resolution than 960 by 540. So by default, all I tend to go down to just HD 720, see how that looks. And it's the same, it's the same uh, space, it's just a higher resolution. So it's, it's the 16 by 9 view. But I think to myself, okay, there's too much negative space on either side of this character. I want to make it closer to kind of a box. So I'll go back to my render settings and where this says width 1280 maybe I'll make that 960 960 by 720 so now I can kind of zoom out here or you can bring this in to see the full view and I like that pretty good I might uh, adjust my camera even more by clicking the camera and selecting these and unlocking them and I might zoom this in a little better something like that and then I'll select these and lock them again so now we're going to want to edit our mental ray settings now that we have kind of our camera set up and whatnot. So uh, in the mental ray settings we've got several tabs here. So we're going to go to quality. At the very top, this by default is like 0.25 or something. We're going to just drag that all the way up to 2. Then we're going to go to indirect lighting. We're going to turn on global illumination and final gathering. And we'll test that out, but those features just switching into mental ray, changing the resolution, ramping up the quality, and then turning on global illumination and final gathering should be enough to kind of get us what we want. So once you have that, let's go ahead and click this button right here, the clapper by itself, to render out a single still frame and see how it looks. Now there's several problems here. So first of all, the background is black. If we were br to bring this into Photoshop uh, and save it as a PNG, then we would be able to turn that background into a color. Um, but in, in Maya, we can change our camera background. I'm going to bring up my window outliner again. Click on the render camera. I'm going to hit Control A until you get to the attribute editor here. And then scroll down until you see environment. I'll just make this background color kind of a gray. Okay, let's test that out. The global illumination still may not be quite enough, but it also may be. Alright, so that's pretty good. If, if you'd like to be done with that, that's we can see the character's face for the most part. There's still strong shadow there and uh, hard to see that side of his face but we got a decent background. We can see a little bit of shadow projected onto the ground. We can still save this as a PNG and open it up in Photoshop and throw a different color or we can go to File, Save Image and save it as whatever it's supposed to be called and save it as a JPEG and it'll save it exactly like this with that color background. But let's say you do want to change the color in you can either do it in Maya by clicking on your render cam and changing this background color to say blue for instance and then click render 
see how it turns out. Kind of harsh, and it, it projects that color onto the character due to the global illumination. So I personally don't like that, so I'll go ahead and change that back to like a gray. And I'll render it one more time. And once it's finished, I'm going to do a file, save image as, pose, and I'm going to save it as a PNG. Now the PNG will save the alpha channel, and the alpha channel is basically the background. It's going to make it basically invisible. And then I'll open up Photoshop, and I'll navigate to my pose PNG, drag it into Photoshop, and you see how the background is transparent. So I'll just throw in a layer here put the layer underneath the character and you can do some fancy things if you understand Photoshop well enough like adding a ramp or whatever I'm just gonna do a fill so if I hit shift F5 I can go to use I'll choose a color let's choose like a light blue hit OK OK again and there we go so that's that's a nice uh, product so we can go to file save as and save it as a PNG or JPEG or Targa or whatever and then turn this video or uh, this image file in. So if you have any questions about creating renders for your posing, please let me know. Uh, and that's all I got for now.